Welcome to the Mexpreneurs Podcast, the podcast about the stories of Mexican tech startup founders who are building world-class, fast-growing companies and having a positive impact at a large scale. My name is Sergio Chavez. I'm a Mexican based in Germany, a tech startup founder, executive, and mentor, and your host. Today, we welcome back Antonio Anguiano. Antonio, together with Aditya Chan, are the founders of Greeny, a climate tech startup based in Paris, France. Greeny helps companies to accelerate their carbon footprint reduction by placing gamification at the core of employees' ecological engagement. Through the Greeny app, employees track their steps and earn tree planting rewards, which contribute to reducing the company's carbon footprint. In just a few months, Greeny has partnered with seven companies, onboarded 350 users, and achieved the reforestation of 343 trees, compensating 257 tons of CO2. Antonio is CEO and Aditya is product manager. Antonio is Mexican, based in France. He is responsible for the overall company leadership, strategy, go-to-market, and fundraising. You can learn more about Antonio and his professional journey through the previous podcast episode. Aditya is originally from India and is also based in France. Due to his background in product management and computer science, he is responsible for the entire product life cycle, including strategy, development, and implementation, as well as all technical aspects behind Greeny's app. Prior to Greeny, he held multiple product-related roles at different startups across India, USA, and France. He also established in France after completing a master's degree in digital transformation at the Montpellier Business School. I hope you enjoy. Support for this episode comes from Skyfler, a cybersecurity company with a mission to make e-commerce safe for online shops and which currently protects dozens of Shopify-based businesses through its 360 degrees holistic protection. As an online shop owner, you know that every cent you spend in online advertisement counts, especially in Google AdWords. Therefore, keeping a tight control of your budget and the ROI are essential. Nevertheless, there are bad actors out there who can make those costs explode. Skyflare's click fraud protection solution helps you prevent and resolve those threats. At Mexpreneurs, we had the privilege to have Skyflare's founders in the podcast, including Juan Ocampo, a Mexican tech startup founder and Skyflare's chief operations officer. Visit skyflare.com slash mexpreneurs to learn more and also to get a 10% discount during your first three months of your annual subscription. Skyflare is at the moment available in Europe, Mexico, and Canada through the Shopify app store. Hello, Antonio. Welcome back. Hello, Sergio. Thank you for being here today again. No, thank you too for uh, inviting me. What is uh, Greeny? Greeny is uh, mostly a green tech uh, software service uh, platform that uh, helps companies to accelerate carbon footprint transition to accompany them to go to carbon neutrality, mostly based on artificial intelligence and gamification. Sounds complex, but uh, it's quite simple. The first thing we do is we calculate your carbon footprint that is made by a bot, build it and base it on ChatGPT4. This uh, collects your information and tells you, okay, this is your carbon footprint. Uh, these are the areas where you have to optimize, makes you an action plan for optimizing your carbon footprint. After that, we have the engagement apps that helps you compensating the uh, the other part of the carbon footprint. These apps are quite simple. Those are two apps, one in Android and one in Apple. The apps are downloaded by our clients, by employees. It connects to the steps of every single person. It tracks the steps so people start walking to be in better health. And uh, the most they walk, the most they unlock rewards. These rewards are trees uh, that are planted by one of our partners called EcoTree who is uh, certified and verified by Veritas. These trees contribute to the compensation of their carbon footprint. There's a lot to unpack there, but let's just start off by, especially for the benefit of our audience. So when we talk about carbon footprint, what is the issue that you see in the market? Like what exactly are companies doing today in regards to carbon footprint? Why do you see a gap there in terms of how they're tackling the reduction of their carbon footprint? I think there is two things. The first is the context, or there is an urgency in the planet. Now, all companies have to become carbon neutral before it's too late. Besides that, there is regulations, specifically in Europe, especially uh, can take France, for example. In France, since the beginning of the year, all companies from 500 employees, they have the obligation to do a carbon footprint study and a decarbonization plan also. That context makes that today it's the moment. It's the moment to go with a solution to the market. There is a traditional way to do it. And the traditional way, it's complex, I will say, and expensive. 
because calculate your carbon footprint. Uh, normally you bring a consultant. The consultant obviously is going to invoice you days of consulting <laughs> and to collect data, analyze data, and do all this. So we are trying to automate all those tasks with a bot based on, uh, on ChatGPT4 that can drastically reduce the cost of this process. The first part of it, which is uh, calculating the carbon footprint and doing the action plan. Then there is the compensation part because you can optimize all your footprint. Now you can turn off the lights, turn off the cafeteria, stop traveling by plane and optimize your way to the office. But at the end, companies still need to pollute to exist. Yeah, they still need to have emails, uh, servers, uh, I know, suppliers. And there's still a part that you cannot eradicate. And so you have to compensate. And for that, there is many ways. We choose the trees because it's something that is really tangible and something that uh, especially employees can, can feel the tree and see and, and quantify exactly how much carbon it's per tree. And also you were mentioning something super interesting, which is the gamification part. Why exactly is gamification so relevant to tackle carbon footprint reduction and to also engage employees, which, as I understand, they're a, a key part of the whole process around Greeny? The two main problems, it's the complexity of calculating, but also the complexity of bringing all your employees with you into these sustainability actions. Uh, to keep your employees engaged into these actions, it's the most complex part because you have to be there to animate and motivate all your network and keep them there. So we replace this motivator by gamification. We just use a traditional gamification cycle that was invented by all the, the social media platforms, <laughs> which is, is quite basic. You know, there is a motivation that brings you to an action. The action gives you a reward and then the rewards, you accumulate them so you cannot get out of it. So we took that model and we put it at the service of ecology. So employees walk as an action, they get rewards, which are trees, and they accumulate the number of trees and the CO2 they compensate. That injects dopamine into the brain of the of the human every time there is a, they are achieving objectives and keep them motivated. And the way that it's being done today, for example, is that, I don't know, you have uh, somebody from the HR department chasing employees to implement certain actions, like, because as you were mentioning, like, that's part of the, like, bringing people on board and keeping them motivated is, is one of the most complex parts of it, of the compensation. How is it done today? We are continuously improving the, the model. Uh, I think the first onboarding we did, we got only 30% of uh, adoption. In the last one we did, we went up to 94% adoption. We have done many things. Uh, the first thing is that we implemented uh, one tree that is planted for every employee that downloads the app. So there is an, an immediate reward to download and sign into the app. We normally do a kickoff call where there is a lot of company, it's there. So we present them what is a corporate and uh, social responsibility program, what are the access, what are the objectives as well. So we sensibilize the employees into that cost. And then we, we launch the challenge. Uh, we start with a weekly and with a monthly challenge. Okay, we all have to work and, uh, and achieve this number of trees so we can compensate the carbon CO2, the, the CO2 footprint of the company. And we also, make our uh, our community live in Slack. Today, uh, Slack is a good tool for companies to communicate and all the community lives there, especially after the COVID, because we are like half of the jobs, they became home-based, so uh, people communicate there. So we create a group in Slack and we continuously post the, the leaderboards and the rankings into there so people can react and they can share and they can talk about it. There is also the animation of the network that happens in, in Slack today. And looking into, let's say, the North Star from Greeny and what your vision is, so do you see that, let's say, in the future, every company should ideally be using Greeny in order to basically track that engagement, involve employees? Like, How do you see the future in, let's say, five, ten years after the wide adoption of Greeny? I envision a future where corporate and social responsibility is simple. Today it's complex because whenever regulation comes into the market, there is always the big players and the big consultant companies that arrive. They create a monopoly. 
And where, where there is a monopole, there is Uberization because they make it complex so people cannot do it by themselves. It's quite simple at the end. And specifically well, today, basing uh, our calculations, our data collection, everything based on artificial intelligence that is there, and it has never been that accessible, taking the best things of the last decade. For me, the biggest advance of the last decade was artificial intelligence and gamification for uh, social networks. If we take these both things and put it at the surface of ecology, we may be able to solve the biggest challenge of the, of the planet, which is the global warming. And especially because that's a global issue where I think everyone in some shape or form needs to be involved, needs to contribute, needs to take action. Né? Like it's it's probably not enough with just a few motivated employees inside every organization. We pretty much need to bring everyone on board into this mission. It is the case. And sadly, it, now it's becoming a regulation. You know? And let's say that our product two years ago or one year ago could be a nice to have for a company. You know? And today it's a must have because the, the, the law enforcement uh, is getting really high. In France, I think uh, the penalties, it's uh, 75,000 uh, euros as a fine and five years of imprisonment for the CEOs that are not doing the plan. It's almost a crime. <laughs> and those type of penalties, is that something that you're seeing in addition to France already being rolled out in other European countries, also in other regions? In every country, especially in Europe, they have freedom to establish it. You know? But there is a European direction that has been given. The objective is the Agenda 2030, that in 2030 everybody has to be uh, neutral. We know it's not possible unless we take technology and we put it at the service of this cost. But today, for me, consultant firms and many other things on that market, like carbon credits, and it's slowing down the process. It's making it complex. And I think it's our responsibility as experts in technology uh, to bring solutions that really uh, that get the job done. And now, Antonio, please walk us through through the traction that you've seen. So you've already been building Greeny uh, through several months. What are some of the feedback? What are some of the results that you've achieved since you got started with it? It's quite early. We started uh, building Greeny uh, last year. And uh, actually, we start commercializing on, on December. So we just have like six months of, of traction. But so far, we have onboarded four companies. We spent the first beta period with two of them, cleaning up the model and cleaning the apps and, and the technology. But mostly today, we have around 350 active users. And we have compensated 300, uh, around 400 trees and compensated around 300 tons of, uh, of CO2. Um, the value of the startup, it's based in, in many things, obviously in the monthly recurring revenue, but also in the active users that are on the platform and uh, the onboarding and the adoption rate of the apps and the active users as well. So it's quite encouraging. We're still looking for some more traction. That's why we are building the, the carbon footprint uh, calculator powered by AI. That's uh, we're going to release and make available to everyone for free so we can maximize lead generation and move to the second phase and mostly our objective is to go for a pre-seed round and uh, with business angels and this is uh, in the second part of the year and in terms of awareness i would assume this is a super interesting relevant topic as you mentioned across france europe what is some of the feedback that you've heard from uh, I don't know, government institutions, from companies. What are they saying about the solution that you've been building? It's uh, super encouraging. After the beta phase of uh, three months with uh, the first two clients, we started doing some interviews and uh, it was quite emotive to see what we imagine that will happen actually happen. And the, the employees are engaged. We also see that uh, in average for the active users, there is a 15% increase in, in the steps per month, every month that is happening. So it means that they are really working more and more. So uh, I don't see them every day because though they are my, my clients, but they should be getting in really good fit. And it's quite encouraging. We also see that they change their behaviors. They drop the subway uh, two steps before arriving to work, just to walk and to come and to make the content turn. Besides that, we have also contacts from uh, the Minister of Ecology in, in France that uh, obviously answer us and uh, align with uh, our objectives and encourage us to continue uh, with this and has pointed out, they point us 
to some other organizations to get some subventions and to continue financing the project. I think it's something that is not a wave of fashion on this subject. It's something that we need, actually. I'm trying to make some or find some uh, innovative ideas or ways to tackle the project or tackle the subject and making the planet better. It's always encouraging. And I think everybody takes it in the, the right way. Definitely. And it's great that you're bringing together companies, uh, government, of course, employees. So it's a big effort in terms of bringing all the relevant stakeholders to the table. We will be right back for a conversation with our guest. Support for this episode comes from Partnership Leaders, the leading community of partnership professionals and executives in SaaS and tech with over 1,500 members globally. We're living the decade of the ecosystem, and every CEO needs to become a partnership leader. Just take a look at the top companies in the world today, like Microsoft, Google, and Apple. They have all become platform companies, and partnership executives in IT have been the ones leading these transformation. Partnership Leaders brings these executives together and is building a playbook to enable CEOs and business leaders across industries to transform their organizations into platform companies. If you're a tech startup founder, Partnership Leaders is the place for you to learn how to leverage partnerships to take your business to the next level. I'm a member of PL and co-host of the Germany chapter and have seen firsthand the richness and value of this incredible community. Visit partnershipleaders.com to learn more and to apply to become a member. Make sure to mention in your application that Mixpreneurs referred you so you can receive a special price if your application is accepted. Antonio, it would be great if you could walk us also through the team behind Greening. So I have the pleasure to talk to you as, as the founder, the CEO of the company. Who, in addition to you, is behind Greeny? I will say like in every startup, there is always uh, people going and coming. And we have seen uh, many different profiles that are interested by the company and giving a little help. Today, we are mainly two associates and this will change in the future, for sure, <laughs> according to the, to the different needs of the company. Today is uh, Alicia Chan. Uh, he's my, uh, my one co-founder and he's in, based in India. And in the past, we have seen uh, many, many other, many other people. At the beginning, we have a friend called Loic that uh, he was like helping us pitching the, the project to the first startups or to the first clients uh, when we didn't have any product. We just arrived saying that, okay, we have a product. It's really nice to calculate the carbon footprint and engage your employees. And we were like testing the market and he was helping us with that. Then Ivan came into the picture as well. He helped us uh, coding the first part of the platform. And today we are moving to artificial intelligence. So we need another different kind of capabilities. And we may look for somebody different in the future. The, the team is growing. And mostly we are we are too. But it's also incredible like how you've been able to build such a solution despite let's say a small team still by today. No? And that uh, we, were, we were briefly talking before the interview in terms of how relevant all the different technologies that are currently available are to be able to build such a solution with a small compact team. No? Uh, it is the case. I think uh, today we have to be up to date with new technologies, the coming of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, language models, uh, and prediction models is helping us like crazy. Like uh, today, I think I did the job of six people just with me and chat GPT. It's, uh, it's all our, our bot is based on that and it's super simple to do. Um, it's just a matter of uh, training yourself and being aware of how to use it. Today, I don't think there is a boundary for anybody that has a as a challenge or a project that he wants to achieve. Um, it's just a matter of knowing, first understanding what's the job to be done, then what are the experiences that we have to create to nail that job perfectly. And at the end is feasibility. You know? <laughs> how do I make it happen? And the how do I make it happen change every six months <laughs> because there is uh, new tools coming to the market all the time, especially with the, the arriving of uh, low code or no code. We are not yet in the no code. I would say everything is low code for the instance, uh, but we will be there in at least one of two years. And also, please walk us also through the origin story. So how do you got started together with your co-founder? How do you guys got to know each other? You started first on your own and you started bringing everyone into the table as you continue to move forward. So what's been that evolution in the team behind the Greeny? 
We met in a, in a previous company, and I think we were trying to create our own startup. We're mostly trying to put our experience into the service of a bigger need. There was like one major problem to solve in the, in the world, which is a global warming. And we, just, we started brainstorming, doing product design workshops and trying to figure out what's the problem to solve exactly, understanding the market, who are the players, the competitors, what's the actual ecosystem and seeing what is well done and what is not done at all. <laughs> and then trying to bring something that actually do the job. And I always think that if you solve the problem, then the money comes by itself. The objective of a company cannot be to make money. It should be to solve the case. Um, if it solves the case, then, then the money comes and the clients come. Definitely. And it was then this joint motivation, well, this previous work experience, plus this motivation, what brought you together and then led you into continue bringing more people on board. My motivation was that every time I lost one of my employees in the past, it was because they wanted to go and do something that has more impact. Even if my last company was a privacy company and we were defending the digital rights uh, of humans, every time I lost somebody, it was because they wanted to go and solve the ecological challenge. And I started hearing about it more and more. And Personally, obviously, I have my engagement uh, and I always have had it, uh, recycling, uh, trying to walk and move, pollute less. But I never made it my recent work. And, and actually, it was quite clear when one day I just wake up and say, okay, <laughs> there is a problem. I think I was watching a documentary about the impact of global warming and how difficult it is and, and how late we are as a company. And well, I start like thinking about it and in one moment saying, okay, this is the problem that we have to solve. Um, most of the solutions in the market today are created by financial teams or consultants. And there is really little tech people putting their knowledge into the service of a call. And so I talked to my first people that, uh, that built the project with me, and we all aligned that uh, it was a nice problem to solve. I think we were driven by the intellectual challenge of it, first of all. And really fast, we, we start prototyping, which is, I think, the, our strongest part. And then start seeing clients. The first clients, we went to see them and we had no product. We were bluffing. <laughs> this is our super solution. Will you buy it? And they say, yes, yes. And okay, but, well, we don't have it. <laughs> I talked to you in one year when I have it. <laughs> no. But we were trying to validate the product market fit before we start coding and getting ourselves into something that may not give results. So there is uh, what we call the minimum viable product. It's not always a product. It's a way to validate the product market fit. And so our minimum viable product was an idea in a PowerPoint. But it's fantastic that you started then getting very early validation, despite the fact that the product was, not, was still not ready. But there were so many people interested in what you were building. Yeah, from the moment we started doing that, it was, uh, I think it was April last year, until the moment we delivered the first version, which was in, uh, in December. We had some time in the middle, um, but yeah, it's a way to reduce uh, risk. You know, there is uh, most of the startups they die costing a lot of money because they start building a product and they want to commercialize after building the product. And I, I think it's a big mistake because uh, you can always go and bluff. You create a website, you post, you try to do some ads, you see if people click on it, how many people came, how many people register, you create a waiting list, and in that case, you validate that there is attraction. And Antonio, we're reaching the end of our conversation, so I would just love to know, what are some of the key priorities of Greeny in the next, uh, let's say, 12 months ahead? 12 months for a startup and early stage startup is too far away. Our objectives in the next six months or three months, it's uh, first to deliver the second version of the platform. The first version was the engagement apps. So we walk with Reforest. We are building the second part, which is the first one actually. <laughs> it's the carbon footprint calculator powered by artificial intelligence and uh, doing the go to market in September getting the traction that we need for this flow of or for this offer of solutions and at the end of the year uh, doing our pre-seed round find some investment and then scaling up so that means you're going to be busy in the following three to six months uh, i think so and even the next years
Antonio, what I would love to know, and you did that in our previous conversation, I would just like to reemphasize again, what would be your best advice for other aspiring founders out there that are listening to you? We talked today about many things. For example, one of the ones that captured my attention a lot is, was about that keeping up to speed, keeping up to date with, with new technologies. But what would be, from your perspective, some of the best advice, especially based on some of the latest experiences that you've had with Greeny? I will have three advices. The first one is to focus on, on solving a case, finding the job to be done of the company. That's the first one. If you find how to solve a job, then it's a matter of how I do it. Then it comes to the second one, which is how we do it. It changed really fast. And today, low code solutions are getting that really accessible. And being up to date on new technologies is really, really important. And, and sometimes uh, I prefer to hire young people that are used to these tools than senior people that are used to old tools. <laughs> And, and obviously we have a senior people that is, uh, he has an open mind and it's uh, up to date all the time. That's the best thing. But being up to date with the market and with the different technologies, it's the most important parts. My third point will be, it's better. And it's one of the points of the, the five points of agility. It's most important to adapt to the market than executing a plan. If in the middle of the way, you see that your solution is not what it has to be. Uh, that you are needing something that actually you are exploring a subject and you see that that subject could be solved in a different way or there is uh, some part of the technology that make it simpler in a different way don't be scared to pivot your company we started building an engagement solution and for compensating the the co2 footprint and in the way we realized it, that we were like solving the third step of the use case <laughs> just compensating and, but the most we see the clients, the most they, we see that they don't have a good solution to calculate carbon footprint. They're relying on consultants. So uh, we just decided to, okay, we're going to pivot a little bit, not pivot, but complement the suite of uh, solutions that we have with the calculator with artificial intelligence. So we have to realign the objectives and, and don't be scared. Uh, even if you have a plan, it's more important to adapt to the market. Because if you keep up to your plan, Maybe when you finish executing the plan, somebody else understood better the problem and then you are late and you will be just catching up with somebody else instead of leading the market. That will be my best advice. That's fantastic, especially the fact of really getting deep into the problem, as you mentioned, validating it, talking to customers and evolving from there, not just fixing with a plan and executing that plan without even questioning it. So I think that's super powerful. I think so. We have to put our ego aside and thinking that it's not me trying to make something work. It's us trying to solve a problem. That's a fantastic way of wrapping up. Antonio, thank you very much for your time. Again, it's a fantastic venture, the one that you're building at Greeny. So thank you for taking the time to be here. And of course, we will be following very closely what the latest and greatest of Greeny in the following months. Thank you. Thanks, Sergio. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Antonio. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And thanks to you for joining us today. Please remember to subscribe via your favorite podcast app to be notified about new episodes and share with us your feedback. We would love to hear from you. Thank you also to the Mexpreneurs team, Valeria Morel, Hector Barragan from Hypervoltage, Francisco Jaimes, Pamela Elizalde, Katia Cruz, Rocio Marroquín. I am Sergio Chavez. See you next time.